Beacon Courtyard. John. Blake? Blake turned around in shock to be discovered. Blake. John. I. Um. This isn't. John looks at her at ears then looks her in the eye. John. Blake. Do you really think so low of me? Blake. What? I know. John looks at the beacon statue. John. Did you know the person memorialized here is one of my ancestors? Blake looked at him confused. John. The funny thing about the second statue wasn't supposed to be a hooded figure. The second statue is my ancestor's wife and she was a faunus. Blake's eyes widened then looked at the statue. John, the problem was the council didn't want trouble from the racist side of Vale, decided to change the sculpture. My ancestors wouldn't hold it against them, but it was insulting that the leaders who are supposed to be leading this kingdom to a better future would just break their vows because of public relations. Lilith yawned and John picked her up. John, it's getting late let's go back. Blake, I can't go back. John, and why? Blake remained silent. John, it's Schnee, isn't it? Blake nods. John sighs. John, come on I know a place in Vale for you to lay low. Blake, why would you help me? I'm not even your teammate or that close. John, a huntsman's duty is to help anyone they can. I'm helping you and there's nothing you can do about it. Let's go. Blake speechless followed them unknown that a shadowy figure follows them. A hotel in Vale. The trio entered and the faunus receptionist welcomed them. Rico, why hello there Mr. Ark, what can I do for you today? John, I'm here to use the apartment for a few days if you please. Rico, oh, here you go sir, enjoy your stay. He hands over the keys. Rico, I would like to inform you that Lord Garen is also there sir. John, thank you Rico. Here have a nice night. John hands him over a tip. Rico, thank you sir. You're too kind. Blake smiled seeing John interact with Faunus respectfully. John motioned her to join him. Ark sweet. John, grandfather are you here? Garen. Wait a moment. Blake took a seat while John prepares some food and tea while they wait and Lilith was just watching TV. John returns with four plates of food. John, Blake, here have some food. Blake, no I'm fine Jow. Suddenly a loud growling noise can be heard. John deadpanned and said, John, you are a terrible liar. Blake just blushed and took her seat. John, Lilith, dinner is ready. Lilith, okay Papa. John, Blake what happened back there? Blake went silent and continued eating. John simply waited to hear her out. Finally when she was done eating, Blake, you know of the white fawn? John, I've dealt with them before. Blake looked at him surprised. John, being a bounty hunter lets you be in touch with the criminal underworld. Blake, so have you killed anyone from the fawn? John, no just arrested some of them for capital crimes nothing more, though I seldom had to take a life. I haven't killed anyone from the White Fawn. Blake visibly relaxed, but
but nervous at how he will react. John, I can see right through you Blake. Blake tensed. John, you were one of them were you not? Blake, I used to believe in their ideals but how they're now going about it is wrong and... John, you could no longer live with their crimes. Blake, yeah I used to have a partner. I thought he was just fighting for our cause, but I saw that all he wanted was revenge. John, it is a common feeling when anyone is ever abused in their life. It's not just Faunus who feels that way. Blake, and now I got into a fight with my team and exposed myself. John, a team who you share a bond with and in time, they become your family. I know Schnee is one of the reasons you left. But if she can't get over her high horse and look you in the eye and accept you then she's the one with the problem, not you. John, since you told me about your life met tell you about mine, if it's alright with you grandfather? They both looked to a doorway and saw Garen leaning on it. Garen, it's fine John our clan often trusted others and it has never backfired on us. John nodded and Garen sat down to eat. John, my family is old Blake, as in really old. My family existed on Remnant for 4,000 years. Blake's eyes widen John's family, is that old? John, we started out as a small tribe and eventually grew. But humanity being the self-righteous, quarreling race as it's always been waged war for expansion. Our tribe kept out of the power struggle and lived in secrecy. But over the years war never changes. If you get this reference congrats. Our tribe had to take up arms and defend themselves over the course of 200 years everyone in the tribe was trained from the time we're able to walk. We were thought how to run, when we were able to speak, we were thought how to be smart. When we were able to think we were thought how to fight. This is the way. Blake looked at him in disbelief, they were basically child soldiers. John, don't look at it that way, this were ancient times the concept of laws were yet to exist. So this is our law, our way. And when the Faunus Wars came our family supported their rights. If it's one truth we cling to it's that freedom is the right of all sentient life. Blake, so your clan never discriminate? John, no. My grandfather and grandmother could attest to that. Blake looks at Garen. Garen, it's true during the formation of the kingdoms our family was also filled with faunus. I on the other hand, was one of the first arcs to publicly have a relationship with a faunus. During my time in the Great War I was fighting alongside one of the faunus' greatest heroines. The Great Lioness Katarina. As we fought together during that war the two of us became close and eventually it turned into love. Blake was just awed at the thought that two heroes of their respective races was able to love each other even when they were at war. John, so how's grandmother been doing? Garen, you know her cat's got to keep her claws sharp. She's still doing missions even up to today. Oh and don't let her catch you grandson she'll turn you into a scratching post after your runaway attempt. John shivered. Katarina was the only Mandalorian who uses claw gloves as one of her primary weapons. John, ugh don't remind me. Garen, Miss Belladonna, 
You don't have to worry about us our family values honor, family, and respect above all. John, so what's your plan now Blake? Blake, I was thinking if I could prove the Fong had nothing to do with the recent robberies. Garen, admirable to defend the Fong for its humble beginnings, but I doubt that's the case. I was thinking of doing some investigations as part of my time here but, seeing as John is part of this, I believe you should see this through. John, I intend to, but can you do me a favor and watch over Lilith while I help Blake? Garen, anything for my granddaughter? John, well Blake it seems we can start tomorrow, so let's get some rest and prepare. Blake, thank you John, for everything. John, this is the way.